G'day guys, what's going on? Today we are doing something a little bit different than the usual um, unboxing and review. We're actually doing a personal PC update. So inside of my PC here, we have a AMD 5900X CPU with a 2070 Super graphic card. The CPU has been cooled by a Deepcool AIO 360, so I think it's a Deepcool Castle 360, which does a pretty good job. But whenever I'm, um, I guess the current problem is whenever I'm doing something like exporting video using Adobe Premiere or running some renders or doing something like that, it actually thermal throttles um, with this cooler. The CPU hits that 90 degree mark very, very quickly. Um, and then what happens is the CPU speed just slowly starts to taper off and slows down to sort of protect itself. I've always wanted to get into liquid cooling, like custom loops, but I've never really been too confident to know like which parts to pick and all that kind of stuff, which is why here in this box, we've got a liquid cooling kit from Thermaltake. So this is their, I can't remember the exact part number or model name, uh, but this is a liquid cooling kit from Thermaltake, which includes a 360 mil rad, three fans, a pump res combo, and obviously the block to go into the CPU. Costs around about $450, so it's obviously more expensive than an AIO, but I'm hoping it will do a much, much better job um, in terms of cooling and performance and allow me to unlock a bit more performance from my CPU. So we're gonna be taking apart or taking out, sorry, the, uh, the AIO. We're gonna be going ahead and unboxing the kit, putting everything in, and then essentially testing it and reviewing it and finding out how it performs. And also I think this will help me get over my fear of liquid cooling. So if you guys like this kind of content, I know it's a little bit different, but I'm really passionate and excited about doing this one. Um, chuck it a like, it really helps me out. Get subscribed and let's begin. All right, so before we get into pulling everything apart, I guess I'll probably just quickly summarize the fan configuration for you guys. Um, I personally like all of my fans running at about 40%, um, just because I find that's the best balance between performance and for um, noise and acoustics. I don't want it to be too loud. But basically these three fans on the bottom here, are, again, it's sucking cool air, fresh air, into the system for the GPU. And then we've got these three fans here attached to the radiator. So these three fans are actually going to be sucking fresh air in as well. So we've got fresh air in coming in from the top and the bottom. And then the three fans here on the side are exhausting all of that hot air out through the back, which I've been actually able to find. Um, for me anyway, that is the best configuration. Now to show you sort of what sort of performance we're currently getting. If we go into the task manager, you can currently see we're just running some stress tests at the moment. So 100% on the GPU, 100% on the CPU as well. Um, currently we're sitting around about 4.26, 4.25 gigahertz and we're running Cinebench R23. So that's currently happening right now. And we've also got Furmark running in the background just to sort of completely load and saturate the GPU. If we jump into hardware monitor here, you can see that at the moment we're hitting that 90 degree mark. It's drawing around about 180 watts. It actually can draw more than that. So I actually do know we are thermal throttling. Usually it does you know, hit around about 200, 210 watts at peak. Um, but then as soon, you know, as soon as it hits 90 degrees, it starts to sort of taper off. Um, so you can see we've got the clock speeds, 4.2, 4.3, all the way through. And then our GPU is actually not getting too hot. GPU is only about 70 degrees. Um, clock speed, it's obviously dropped down because I've clicked off something. But, um, you know, the GPU generally is not an issue. It's more the CPU that I'm worried about. I want to try and get that 90 degree mark um, gone. So hopefully with this custom loop, we can get it, you know, to hopefully not go over 80, 85 degrees, so we can try and get as much performance as possible um, from this from this system. So that's what we're doing today. We've got the kit down in the box here. We're gonna get that out of the box, um, see what comes included, and then we'll start the actual tear apart and get it all built up. All right, so this is my first initial impressions of this, I guess, kit from Thermal Take. So this is the C360 DDZ, DDC soft tube liquid cooling kit. Um, you can see it comes with the tubes, the pump res combo. Looks like we've got a controller here for the lighting. We've got the CPU block, which is RGB with some RGB fans, a 360 mil rad, all the different compression fittings, I believe that's what they're called. We've got some right angled fittings as well, a little jumper for the um, 24 pin power supply connector to help, sort of help cycle the system with power to get that pump 
working from what I've understood from all the videos that I've watched and one liter of pure clear transparent coolant. So this is the kit that I'm working with. I'm super excited. So let's get this out of the box. Now, something that is actually really, I think quite cool is that it gives you an installation reference on the back of the box. So if you're a bit of a noob, a bit of a beginner like myself, it will tell you basically where to put what and the graphic is actually really, really nice. So it tells you, you know, put the pump at the bottom, your footings go in these parts of the tubes, the tubes go into these parts of the inlet and outlet of your block, your res and your radiator. And then these are where your fans and you know, your cooling goes and everything else. So I think that's actually a really, really nice illustration. Definitely makes me feel a little bit more confident. And then you can see here as well, you've got some, uh, you know, specifications on the fans, the pump res, the radiator and the coolant as well. So the fact that this is on the outside of the box, you don't have to keep referring back to a manual is very, very helpful. And it definitely makes me feel like I'm going to be able to do this without hopefully stuffing it up too much. Alrighty guys, so here we are. We are basically finished. We've got the PC running with Cinebench R23. We're just doing a few runs just to make sure everything is in order, but so far so good. And I mean, overall with this kit, I am very, very impressed. Um, it does look really nice. You know, we've got those thermal take fans up in the top, acting as an intake, bringing cool fresh air in to, you know, pass through the radiator. We've got the MF120 GT fans there as an exhaust and then some CF120s as an intake as well. So basically the fan config hasn't changed. Um, we've got the, pub, the pump res combo mounted at the front. We've got the, you know, the thermal take uh, block on the CPU. And then we've got those clear hoses with the uh, transparent coolant that, uh, that thermal take provides um, running through the system. Now, some, I guess, little issues that I did have that maybe Thermal Tech could address in the future. Mainly my personal issue, my biggest one was with these compression fittings on this on this soft tubing. Um, I did try, you know, softening, it, softening up the tubing with some boiling water, just sort of dipping the tip in and just making sure that, you know, we could try and get um, this to be a bit more malleable, but basically the compression fittings was really, really tough to get these to close all the way. And you can see on this one here, um, there is still a little bit of a gap, which is probably not the end of the world, but it does concern me a little bit considering that this is a beginner's kit. Um, you know, someone who maybe is even less experienced than me would definitely have um, some issues. You know, there's no tools included to, to get them to close all the way. You basically just have to use your hands or whatever you have available to try and close them. Um, but you know, so far there isn't any leaks or anything like that that I can see. We've you know done the paper towel test and everything else, and everything was pretty straightforward. The instructions for you know installing the block, installing res, was really really simple. And you know, same goes with the radiator and the fans too. Um, but the other thing that I will mention is that I don't know if you guys can see it, it's a bit hard, but the pump res has this blue and yellow cable which is not sleeved which is a real shame. It would have been really nice to have that cable down the bottom there sleeved, considering everything else, you know, with these fans, with the RGB, it's all sleeved from Thermal Take. So that's a bit of a shame that they just didn't, you know, sleeve those two cables in there. That would have been really nice. Um, and with the pump res, it would have been nice if they included a bracket so I could have mounted it vertically um, onto, you know, the, the mounting spaces for the 120 mil fans. So basically, I'm um, trying to sort of go like along the along the width of the fan. That would have been really nice if they had a bracket there that you could have clamped it into. But unfortunately, they do include a bracket. It just doesn't fit for this particular configuration. So we've just basically mounted it um, using some of the holes in the bottom of the case. But overall, everything looks pretty nice. Um, if you come around the front here as well, you can see the tubes and, you know, everything looks pretty straightforward. And we've got plenty of tubing left if we ever wanted to, you know, do a water cool GP or something like that. But in terms of temperatures, so we are still getting very, very close to that 90 degree mark. Um, it has thermal throttled a little bit. Um, we can ramp the fans up, you know, a lot more to get some more performance out of it, but I wanna try and keep it, 
you know, as quiet as possible because it is a computer that I'm going to be sitting next to a lot of the time um, without headphones on or anything like that. But in terms of results, you know, before we did the the run, you know, we had 21636. Oh, sorry, I should say before we changed the cooler, we had 21636 as our result. We'll let this, uh, I guess, run of R23 finish and we'll see what sort of result we get. Okay, so thinking back to the beginning of this video, which was for me to try and help you decide on whether or not a custom loop was a better investment than an all-in-one liquid cooler, like would you get that much more performance? Obviously it's gonna be more expensive, but would you be able to get a cooler, quieter system that allowed your CPU to perform better? And unfortunately my answer is, I wouldn't say it is worth it. So uh, if you're looking at you know a custom loop, you know like this one here, it's very good, um, couple issues, but it is very good and for the price of about $450, it is a great way to sort of enter the market if that is something that you want to tick off your bucket list like what I've done. But when you compare it to like most all-in-one coolers that cost about 150 to 250, anywhere in between that price range, you can get yourself a really, really good all-in-one cooler which comes with fans, RGB, monitoring, all that kind of stuff, which is all, you know, assembled for you, much easier to install than a custom loop for sure. Um, I would say that that's probably the, the route that most people should go. With this particular loop, the actual pump was much noisier, much louder than the one that come with the Deepcool AIO. Um, in terms of performance, I don't know if you can see it on the screen here if you wanna come in close, but basically with the old Deepcool AIO, we had 21636 as the score, and with the new one, 22, or with the custom loop, 22119. So we've gained about 490 points, which in R23, I know it might not sound like a huge amount. So I mean, technically on paper, did we get more performance? Yes. Is my system a little bit louder now because of that pump? Yes. Was it more expensive than the AIO? Well, obviously. So if you're thinking about getting into water cooling um, and you're thinking that it's going to change your performance, change how quiet your computer is, um, with this custom loop, unfortunately, you're not gonna get that. You might have to spend a bit more money. You might have to invest in custom one-off pumps or custom one-off pieces to get a really, really quiet system. I know it's possible because there's tons of people out there that are doing it, um, but with this custom kit, or sorry, with this DIY beginner kit, um, you're essentially just getting everything to make it possible, but it's not the best of the best. And I don't know, I feel like I'm a little bit defeated, but at the same time, I think aesthetically, it's quite pleasing, you know, it's definitely something that if you have it in your room, um, people are gonna, you know, talk about it, or it's, you know, just something cool to show off to your friends. So, let me know what you guys think. Um, maybe I did something wrong, maybe I've got the fan configuration set up in the wrong way. Um, it's bringing cool air in and then exhausting that hot air out. Um, I think that's the best configuration for this case, but if I'm wrong, I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comment section. So thanks for coming along this journey. Thanks for watching this video. Chuck it a like if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Okay, so it's been a number of weeks since I started this project about whether or not a custom loop was actually better and you know perform better and quieter than a all-in-one liquid cooler and whether or not it was actually worth it. So I think it was three weeks ago I started this project and a lot has happened in between and I wanna share that with you guys and try and really summarize this video into a few minutes to make it really, really clear about what I think you should do if you're in that sort of predicament. So this kit from Thermaltake, $480, 360mm rad, comes with the fans, the pump, the liquid, the hoses, the fittings, all that kind of stuff. It's great, but there's a few big, big problems that I think they need to address, um, which is first of all, in the system, or sorry, in the kit, there is really not a very good option for mounting the pump to your system. There's only one little bracket, which is not very versatile. And the pump itself being a DDC, DDC pump means that you can't change the voltage. It's a 12 volt pump. 
and it makes quite a bit of noise and it vibrates quite heavily. Um, it's spinning or pumping the fluid through as fast as it can go. And so the vibrations from the pump, once you've secured it to the bottom of your case or wherever, it vibrates the rest of the case and creates like this huge acoustic chamber where like everything is just making a vibration and it makes a sound. So I tried to fix that by buying extra things. So I started off by buying this bracket here which didn't do anything. It basically, I thought it would, you know, separate some of the um, the pump and, you know, the, the bottom of the case. I thought it would be like a, something I could have in the middle, but it didn't do anything. It just, you know, vibration passed through, which is fine. So the next thing I did is I went to Bunnings and I bought this anti-vibration material that, you know, you would put under heavy machinery to, you know, uh, stabilize something if it's on like a concrete floor, it's like a big roll, um, but I just like literally cut little bits of it and stuck it under each corner and that made a huge difference it did make it a lot quieter but definitely not you know as quiet as like a d5 pump or anything like that which costs a lot more has made it somewhat quiet but is it worth it when you consider how much this whole kit costs probably not and there's a few other things because this is my first time the whole filling it draining it every single time you need to change something change the ram change your gpu um, put a new fan in or a new cable potentially it does look aesthetically, I think, quite cool and people are gonna ask questions. And for me, as a bit of a you know, tech enthusiast, I do like how it looks, but it's not very practical for me in my particular situation. And I think if you're gonna go down the path of doing water cooling for your system, you should be spending way more and basically custom buying every single little fitting and you know, piece of hose and you know, doing the hard line and doing all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like set and forget, you don't touch it for three or four years whatever the case may be. Um, soft tubing is great, but it's not necessarily very practical. And this kit doesn't include, you know, the best mounting mechanisms for the pump. Um, did the temperatures get better? Only by a few degrees, like three or four degrees under load, which is nothing special. Did my CPU, you know, frequency boost up extra because of that, you know, bit of extra thermal overhead that I had? No, it didn't. Um, and was it, louder than what I used to have with my all-in-one cooler. Unfortunately, because of the pump and the vibration that it creates, yes, it is louder. So for those reasons, you know, I couldn't recommend going to something like this from Thermaltake, this particular kit. Um, the fans that they include, I really like the Thermaltake fans. And I really like the radiator and the fans are very, very quiet and they look very, very nice. But that's pretty much the only positive that I can say. They do give you everything you need, but you could also just go and buy that separately as well. And it'd probably come up around that same $480 mark to, um, to get all of these pieces. So that's hopefully enough information to make it easy for you guys to decide whether or not to go the all-in-one cooler route or the custom liquid cooler, um, custom loop route. Then we'll take, I mean, we've had a chat and they've said to me that these DDC pumps are a noisy pump compared to a D5, which cost way more. Um, they acknowledge that like, you know, if people are getting into this for the quietness factor, that this is probably a pump that should, they should maybe not consider. So if that's the case and they've been honest enough with me, which I really appreciate, then they should probably just take it off their website altogether and not even sell it because people are going to be so excited like I was when I got it and then put it all in and be like, oh my God, my computer is actually louder than what it was before. And when you're working at home all day and you're gaming, you can hear it quite noticeably. I think that's going to put a lot of people off and make people want to like, you know, return their product um, and ask the question like, what did I do wrong here? So hopefully that, you know, makes it quite clear. I think it makes it quite clear. I'm going to be, once this, once this video is done, taking this all out and putting in a all-in-one cooler just because it's going to make so much more sense and um, I think thermal performance is going to be on par with this anyway. Um, if you're going to go down the you know, the routes of custom liquid cooling, you're gonna spend a whole lot of money, a whole lot more money because you really are doing it for the passion and for the love and the aesthetic. And uh, that's just something that I think you have to sort of accept whenever you get into a hobby and you really wanna become an enthusiast, it's gonna cost you a lot. And you don't really get much in return, maybe on paper, but maybe it will make you feel good when you look at your computer and be like, I built that. So that's, I think, the big aesthetic and the big reason why a lot of people do it. Um, and if you do it well, you can get a really high performing system that's really, really quiet. So it just costs you a lot more money to get to that point. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, thanks to Thermal Take for being so honest and happy to work with me because you have given me something at a really, really big discount. 
to make this possible. They didn't send it to me for free, but they did give me a really, really good discount, which I very much appreciate because it allowed me to scratch that itch. And um, I am a big fan of Thimble Take. I'm just not a big fan of this pump in particular um, and this kit. So guys, chuck it a like, get subscribed if you want to see more content like this. If you want to ask me any questions, you can hit me up in the comment section or on my Discord channel. List to everything that I have in my PC is down in the description as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.